Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremton News 10 at 10 where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started and we begin with a stunner on the campus of Gonzaga University tonight. The nation's longest active home winning streak came to an end in the kennel. The sixth ranked GU men fell to LMU in a stunning upset. We have team coverage tonight with Krem 2's Andrew Quinn in the kennel. First though, let's kick things off with sports director Travis Green right here in the studio. Travis. Hey Mark, 75 straight wins in the kennel. You have to go back to 2018 for the last time the Bulldogs lost at home. That was to in-conference rival St. Mary's, a team that always gives the Zags a tough matchup. Tonight it was in-conference foe Loyola Marymount. Lions Cam Shelton gave Gonzaga fits all night game high 27 points a big three here to give LMU a seven point lead with under three minutes to go but Gonzaga had some more late game magic Drew Timmy had a rough game but came up big when they needed him bucket cuts the lead to four after an LMU score Malachi Smith watch closely here the perfect tip to Timmy four point game again Timmy had 17 points in total about 30 seconds later Nolan Hickman, we've seen him do this this season. Three-pointer makes it a two-point game. That's what you call a big bucket. On the other end, Spokane's very own Anton Watson comes up with the intercepted pass here and finishes with the game-tying jam, 66 all with just over a minute to play. Drew Timmy would later knock down a free throw to give GU a lead, which gave Shelton and the Lions one last chance, and Shelton Gets it to go off the glass for a one-point lead. So Gonzaga has 13 seconds left to make something happen. Timmy misses. Strother gets the board, but he misses too. The streak is over at 75 as Gonzaga falls 68 to 67. Our Andrew Quinn has more from the kennel. Well, Travis, it finally happened. For the first time in 76 games here at the kennel, the sixth-ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs were defeated by Loyola Marymount 68 to 67. Really nothing went well for Gonzaga tonight. LMU was much more physical, out-rebounded the Zags by nine, and held Drew Timmy to just five made field goals. I feel like our, physical, our physicality could have been way better um, in the first half. Um, we find ourselves getting punched in the mouth quick and fast with these um, these teams. So I just feel like, um, you know, if we come out juice, energized, ready to fight, we should be in a, a better position than we were tonight. The Lions were led by grad student guard Cam Shelton, who had 27 points and buried three big threes down the stretch to make the upset a reality. He's a good player, man. He's just a really good player. He's he's. He's great with the ball. Uh, he had come, come coming into this game. He had not been shooting well from three, and he got going from three on his step back. He's a great finisher around the rim. I think he's one of the leading scorers in the in the league. Uh, he's strong, has a lot of freedom. So, kind of use all those factors. That makes a, a guy hard to guard. The Zags now have a quick turnaround as they will head to Stockton to take on the Pacific Tigers on Saturday. Tip off for that game is set for 7 p.m. For now, reporting at the McCarthy Athletic Center, Andrew Quinn, Krem2 Sports. From immunity to federal court, Boeing now facing criminal charges in the deaths of 346 people. This after two crashes between 2018 and 2019 grounded the Boeing 737 MAX planes. Boeing was originally granted immunity from the Justice Department, but a federal judge in Texas just ruled the company can be criminally charged. Another significant update, the victim's families were granted crime victim status, and that means they have legal rights, including the ability to reject a plea bargain. Underlying all this is the fact that Boeing cut a sweetheart deal with the Department of Justice. Remember, 346 people are dead because of Boeing's aircraft. They haven't been held fully accountable for that. Uh, what the victim families are likely going to do now is use their status, their legal rights, to object to that deferred prosecution, that sweetheart deal that Boeing has with the Department of Justice. It's important to note this is incredibly rare in U.S. aviation law history. It's rare that a corporation is arraigned on criminal charges regarding the deaths of plane crash victims. We have new information tonight about the man suspected of breaking into a Deer Park home and killing an 83-year-old man last month. This is certainly not the suspect's first time behind bars. In fact, he has 14 felony convictions. So why was he allowed back on the streets at all? Coming up in 10 minutes, Krem 2's Amanda Rowley breaks it down for us. 
The Spokane Valley Police Department looking for a missing 12 year old tonight. Mackenzie Hell Stenzola allegedly rather ran away from home tonight. She was last seen just before 6 p.m. near her home in Spokane Valley. She's described as a white female, five feet, five inches tall, weighs about 140 pounds. She has blue eyes and dark blue dyed hair. Her parents believe she is wearing black sneakers, silver chains with gummy bear charms, a brown hoodie and possibly jeans with holes in the knees. If you've seen Mackenzie or know where she is, you're urged to call Crime Check. That number right there at the bottom of your screen. A downtown Spokane church looking to move because of rising crime in their current neighborhood. Redemption Church is now listed for $2 million. It's been at second and division for nearly a decade now, but the church's pastor says that area has changed and not for the better. We would love to be on this corner uh, and even in the community more, uh, but we feel kind of powerless to be able to do that uh, if we can't protect the families with young kids and other people that are coming in. He says vandalism and destruction of property has cost the church tens of thousands of dollars. In the meantime, Sunday service will still be held until the church finds its new location. Washington Governor Jay Inslee is responding to concerns about his budget proposal to delay the North-South Freeway project here in Spokane. The governor says WashDOT has many hurdles that include rising construction costs and state revenue allocated to complete projects all across the state which have gone down. He says these factors have delayed other projects as well. I do know how concerned the Spokane community is about this. We know how important this is to the community. And I know sometimes people think, well, why Spokane? Well. It's all across the state of Washington. These projects have had to be delayed because higher costs, less money available, less contractors available. And I'm hopeful that we can find something to not have to do this delay. The governor also said he will work with state legislators to ensure the project isn't delayed any further. All right, let's talk weather now. We have been seeing much more reasonably or seasonable rather temperatures over the past couple of days. Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo live tonight with your upcoming weekend forecast. Jeremy? Oh, it's right around the corner. It's Thursday, which is basically Friday, which is basically the weekend. Right now, things aren't looking too bad. We sit at 29 degrees here in town, and as temperatures drop, fog forms. You can see it there in downtown starting to show up around the inland northwest. Dense fog over Snoqualmie Pass. Starting to form over on the Western Plains and up in OMAC as well. Temperatures dropping. We are going to fall into the 20s overnight. So we still got a long way to go, which tells me even more fog is on the way. Right now, we're taking a look at the overall atmospheric pattern. This storm moves off to the north and misses us. But this little guy right there that you see with the arrow down there on the bottom of your screen, that's our next system. And that hits Saturday. It'll eventually move in. We start to see it later in the day. I think kind of Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. It'll start with a little bit of a wintry mix, then snow, and that snow grows a little more widespread, then tapers off quite quickly. Forecast models suggesting that this one just as dismal as the last. Over the course of the next few days, we see a little sun tomorrow afternoon, a little snow on Saturday, and then back to the sun come Sunday. All right, sounds good, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. Well, the Moscow community trying to move forward after the horrific murders of four college students. The town's Art Walk, a tradition since 2004, was canceled this November. It's now returning to the third Thursday of each month through May. People told us it's just nice to get out and focus on talented local artists instead of tragedy. The, the town's been through a lot and now we have a little bit of closure. I don't want to say it's fully closed, but um, People are coming out and it feels good to reconnect and be with each other. The event features dozens of artists from all around the Palouse. Admission is free. In just a few weeks, Moscow Mayor Art Betchy will deliver his State of the City address. Well, Krem 2 is learning that a Lata County judge is expanding a non-dissemination order in the case against Moscow murder suspect Brian Koberger. It now includes attorneys for the victim's families, including the attorneys for the family of Kaylee Gonzalez, who has previously given statements to the media. That order also limits investigators, law enforcement, and case attorneys from talking about information in the case that is not in public record in order to protect the defendant's right to a fair trial. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. The trial of Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell will carry on as planned after a judge denied a request to postpone it today. Vallow and Daybell are charged with murder and conspiracy to commit the murders of Vallow's two children, Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, and Chad's late wife, Tammy Daybell. The judge also decided Vallow and Daybell will not be allowed to have contact leading up to the trial. 
The next hearing is set for February 9th. An update from WashDOT on the size of the homeless encampment near I-90 known as Camp Hope. New numbers show the camp is shrinking. Right now there are almost 140 people at the camp, down 60 from just a month ago. The number of RVs at the camp also going down 27 to 20 from last week with six of them towed uh, from that site just yesterday. As of January 9th, WashDOT says 51 people have moved from Camp Hope to the new Catalyst Transitional Housing Facility. And a water boil order still in effect for parts of the city of Lewiston tonight after a reservoir failed early yesterday morning. Three million gallons of water flooded city streets, washing away parts of streets and sidewalks. The city is still investigating what caused the reservoir to fail. fail rather. However, the water has been tested and they say it has no contaminants. However, the boil advisory is still in place tonight as a precaution. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them right to your phone. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10 where you get more news in less time. But don't go to bed just yet. The U.S. government fighting fires with funding will tell you which Washington region can expect to see a major increase in wildfire aid. Plus, another dead whale washed up on the Oregon coast this week. We'll tell you why scientists think whales just aren't surviving right now when we come back in just 90 seconds.